Hi everyone, welcome to the Zillica Weekly Update with Amrit Kumar. I'm your host, Chase Raz. And what we intend to prototype as a weekly series in some way, form, or fashion, this update will provide a community briefing of the most important Zillica topics of the moment. It's my pleasure to introduce you to the president of Zillica Research, Amrit Kumar. How are you, Amrit? I'm good. Good. Yourself? I'm doing well. Uh, we were just laughing before... Uh, starting, we were talking about how people tend to introduce themselves and ask how they are, and everybody says, "Well, I'm good." So let's let's try again. How are you? How are you really? Not I'm good. I'm good. How are you really? I'm still alive. Still alive. <laughs> I'm still alive. I love that. I love that. That's your um, that's your go to uh, as one of the things we've chatted about just a few moments ago. So first of all, hey, I want to say thank you for agreeing to do this because. I think every bit of information that can go out to the community is wonderful through your own social media, through my social media, through everybody's. It's great, but neither you nor I can take credit for this in a way. Um, Adam Martin, founder of Carbon Labs, working on building the first L2 for Zillica. One day I want to get you talking about what you think about that. But um, Adam suggested that we do a quick five minutes. And Adam has apparently, even though he was on TZO once, he's apparently never met me because he knows five minutes doesn't happen in my world. And I imagine that's the same for you, right? Five minutes turns into what? <laughs> I'm always late in my meetings <laughs> because they always, always continue and never stop. So thanks to Adam for coming up with that. But again, five minutes is probably not going to happen. Amrin, what's, what's the longest you've ever run over in a meeting? I think there was one meeting when we were trying to fix something and it took us all night. So we started about, uh, you know, 4 or 5 p.m. Uh, London time. I went until next morning, 6 a.m., 7 a.m. Oh, my goodness. Was that uh, with that Zillica point, or was that another project? It was a Zillica one. Uh, oh, no. I think Hangouts, we discovered that, or Junal, rather, you know, my, my colleague, he discovered that Hangout apparently has a time limit as well. Zoom has as well. So if you use the free version, I think it's 45 minutes. And Hangouts, uh, they also have, you know, a time limit. So it, it cuts you off, apparently. Something like, I'm imagining you said, how long? Six, eight hours? Over, a whole overnight? 12 hours? Something like that? Twelve hours, more than 12 hours. And then Hangouts was just like, we're done. Yeah. Uh, I, <laughs> you, don't talk anymore. Go back. You, com and you completely taught me on that. Mine was a, a student presentation all the way back in undergrad. We were given 10 minutes to present. The, the teacher finally stopped me. And I said, well, how long did I go? I said, well, we let you go 30 minutes. <laughs> I said, why'd you let me do that? It's supposed to be 10. And they said, well, we, we all know you. We knew it was going to happen. But let's let's um, try to keep on to some point today, even though we could both talk forever. The Zill Bridge. Can we talk about the bridge for a little bit? It has had some delays as a mild understatement, if you will. Then, right, during all of that, you've got this task of coordinating three different entities by my count alone. You've got Zillica Research, you've got Switchio that you're working with, you have Poly Network, of course, that you're working with that powers the bridge, organizing three different organizations. There was the Poly Network hack, then some more delays. How has this process, just if you could encapsulate all of that casually, what would you say about that whole process? It has been challenging, I would say. Um, in very simple terms. And, you know, even within a team, right, when you are running, com running a company and when you have, even within a small team, coordination is important, right? You want to make sure that everyone is aligned. You want to make sure that everyone finishes the task at the right time so they can move forward. It becomes even more challenging when you are doing a cross-team collaboration within the same company, right? So imagine, for example, a team that does, I don't know, AI stuff and the other team does, you, you know, user interface stuff. It becomes challenging if you're doing cross-team cross -team collaboration. Now, here we had three teams I mean, here we had three companies and possibly five or seven teams um, that were involved. For example, in Zilliqa itself, so we had, uh, initially we had to introduce something at the core protocol layer. So for example, we didn't have this notion of Merkle tree. Of right. Many of people may be familiar with this. It's a simple data structure uh, for testing of membership. So we had to add that support uh, to the core protocol layer, which needed support from the core team that maintains the platform. Then we had a few missing features uh, on the Scylla side, for example. So uh, in order to verify Ethereum transactions. So when, you, when you're doing a bridge, some transactions come in, there's some data in that, and you want to verify that data, sanity of that data within a contract. 
And that uh, required coordination with the Scylla team, which you know, builds the compiler and the interpreter for Scylla language. Then we had uh, the Polynet. Oh, so that's, that's on the Zilliqa side. There's one more team on the Zilliqa side that was involved, which was about the front end. So once you have the bridge, you need to connect that front end with the back end contracts. So that's on the Zilliqa side, we had about three teams involved in this. Um, on the Polynet side, they have a team, I don't know how many teams they have within them, but at least there are some people who were in, you know, there to be able to help us integrate Zilliqa with their relayer. And then the switcher team, which had to connect everything with the switcher network, as well as build the bridge for front end. So I would say it was challenging because uh, coordinating with different people in different time zones, that's, that's nightmare. Um, and and uh, you know, sometimes uh, VPNs in China don't work. So uh, you are stuck and you're waiting for a response only to realize that VPN you know, didn't work for the, for, the, for the person on the other side for five hours. Right. So it was challenging, but I think uh, we are very close. Very, very close. Um, what was some of the working environment where did the team start really melding or was there always this, you know, for the past year and a half, most people have had this pandemic mindset where we're, we're all at an arm's length to some degree. And when most of us work remotely anyway, especially in the blockchain world, but did the teams ever really meld or was every team more or less operating on their own timeline? And then you and your team having to coordinate all of those various, we're working on our own timeline inputs. Yeah, so uh, I don't think COVID had anything to do with, or, or you know, working from remote had anything to do sure, with. Sure, just as an analogy. Yeah, but uh, if you see, right, many of these teams have their own projects as well, right? For example, Polynet, you know. Yeah, they don't have anything else to do. Nothing else to do. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So Polynet, you know, it's, it's not just Zilliqa that they work with. So they have, I don't know, Huobi chain that they work with, BSC that they have to support, and a bunch of other things. Uh, similarly, Switcho has its own platform uh, to maintain. Uh, Switcho, you know, had upgrades to do on ZillSwap. Switcho had to integrate this uh, new, you know, I think they call it Stargate, uh, to have interoperability with Cosmos Network as well. So there are a bunch of things that they had to do. It means that they also have to maintain their own timelines. And Zilliqa on its own has to maintain its timelines. And that becomes sometimes very tricky because you have to wait until they finish their own project before they can chip in. Of course, this is something that's very hard to estimate when you're actually doing your project planning, right? Because when you're doing project planning, planning, you see, okay, I need to build this, this, and this. And it will take me, if I build on my own, it will take me, let's say, seven days or a month. When you add them together, it comes out to be, let's say, two quarters. But then you don't know that the other person, the other side of the team, uh, you know, for example, Polynet may have their own, uh, you know, things to do. And that may, may delay your project in, you know, in general. So I think that's, that does create that, that challenge. That's something that's sometimes not in, under your control, which obviously did, uh, did create some delay that uh, was unfortunate. I think some of the project managers in the space would say, that's what we're for. That's what project managers are for. Were project managers deployed or is this just a situation where you've got so many different calendars? It's almost like, yeah, of course there's a, so let me start there. Is there a project manager on it or does the, does the team in essence drive the entire thing? So for the time being, we do have, so some team members don't code. Uh, and for example, I, I, you know, I have gone up the ladder to a point where I could say that don't, don't ask me to code anymore. So I do a little bit of project management as well. Some other team members do as well, but honestly, it's, it's very challenging because when you are, you know, working with a team member that is close, you know, that you work with within your company, yeah. it's very easy to manage. But when you go beyond, they could simply say, we are busy, come back to us in a month, one month's time. And, you can't do anything when you're doing project management, right? It's, it's very challenging. Well, we know what happens every time I drop the letters SLA, service level agreement in this space. Emmert, from you and everyone else in the world, they all point the fingers back at me and go, it's just, it's almost like a mark of shame. They point like enterprise guy, enterprise guy, get out of here. So there's, uh, it, but really let me, for my own personal benefit, is there any semblance to that level Look, I know we want to avoid corporate. We want to avoid button down. We don't necessarily need to go that path. It's unnecessary. But is there, are we just too early for that type of stuff or does it never belong in blockchain or where are we at in terms of being able to go to a partner? Now, I'm not going to single any partner out, but any partner, Zilliqa, for instance, from an outside company, is there a future where companies do a little bit more traditional style of here's our timeline. Can you conform to this or not? If not, we're going to look at vendor number two. We're going to look at vendor number three. I almost want to remove this question from the bridge and ask purely generally, 
um, should I be outcast for ever mentioning SLAs? I, I don't think so. Maybe they could be given different forms. Uh, but I do feel that, uh, and I've spoken to many people in the past who see uh, you know, crypto development, so blockchain development, how blockchain engineering, from outside perspective, and they feel it's not just Zilliqa. I think they would comment on the entire blockchain space. I would say sure. Ethereum development is shabby. And not because they don't like Ethereum, they just feel right. like that. Because it from is. Out, from outside perspective, they feel that it's not, it's not structured enough. It's not uh, organized enough for someone to appreciate what they do. And it's true, but they also challenge, right? Because I think one of the biggest problems that people don't realize in this space is many of these companies or those who are building products today, either be blockchain platform or applications, they become global from day zero. None of the traditional companies have right. that, you know, have that challenge. So today you have most of the projects out there today, when you start, it's a two, three, four member team. And within a matter of matter of days after launching your token, you are responsible to serve, I don't know, at least 10,000 clients or 10,000 token, token users. Right. No startup, traditional startup is prepared for that. So and that, that's, that's the challenge I think that most blockchain startups and companies face and Zelika is no exception to it. And if you are not facing that trouble, it means that you know, you're not being used enough. So I would say that if, 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 if you feel that um, you know, there are not enough users trying to complain, oh, your thing is, doesn't work. It means that there are people not interested in using your product at all in this space. So there's, there's a challenge for sure, but I do feel that uh, it's a bit early. We are not quite there yet. I think blockchain companies grow much faster than you can imagine you know, traditional, you know, from a traditional perspective. So I just feel that they just don't have that, that room to, to, to grow in, in a proper way, I feel. So it's, it's a very... It's a path which is very accelerating, in my in my opinion. It's very much accelerating, but any um, any any hope down the line that that things will reach? Uh, really, what we're talking about is reaching industry maturity, right? Any hope that maturity is is on the horizon, or is it still past the horizon? I would say so. So, if if you look at um, for example, uh, let's say you compare traditional open source software, right? Uh, many mm -hmm. traditional open source software, for example, let's say if you take PyLib, for example, which is a Python package manager, basically. Uh, from what I heard, it was maintained by two people, mostly. And it's, it's, it's the, you know, the tool that you use right. uh, if you're using Python. And that shows you a sense that one, open source software is very difficult to maintain because sometimes they don't have incentives, right? The right. good thing about blockchain is that they are, there are incentives to, for you to continue and you know, uh, push, push your code. But in traditional software systems, it's very hard. Uh, but even then, you know, you see Ubuntu, for example, it's a Linux distribution that is open source and people people use it and it's being maintained in a fairly decent manner. It's, it doesn't mean that the, your system doesn't crash. Ubuntu does crash very frequently. Um, but uh, it, it, I think it's, it's come to a point where uh, it's mature enough for you to expect a certain level of, right. let's say, uh, assurance from that when you use certain, you know, Ubuntu as, a, as, a, as an operating system, for example. Yeah, for sure. I mean, when I think of it, that's a good analogy because when I go into Ubuntu, I, I, I expect about the same level of service um, in terms of operating service, not, you know, customer service, about the same level of service as I would get from Windows or OS X or Mac OS, whatever they're calling it these days. And I, I think it's, it's a very good analogy because how long did it take them as an open source, um, you know, in, in the Linux world, how long did it take them to get to that, to that level to where they could be uttered in the same breath? with Windows and Mac OS and others. So with all of the delays that have happened, and we talked about some of the reasons for that, how difficult it is managing multiple teams, how are things looking right now, you know, late September, 2021? Well, things are looking very good, I would say, um, after a long time. So I do feel that, uh, so we are literally today, we are, um, we have been plugged in everywhere, everywhere now. So uh, everywhere, I mean, we have been, Zilliqa network is now plugged in with the Poly network. And we are going to get plugged in with the Sitio network, which should not take too much time. And the idea is to be able to announce the date probably in the next today or tomorrow. So uh, we would be able to announce a date for the launch uh, in the next uh, in the next two or three days. Well, say. excellent. That'll be really good. And then um, I'm imagine there's some type of lead time in for you know just making sure everything goes to preparing everything. Um, in terms of in terms of um, founders of of projects, in terms of developers that are out there building on the Zilliqa community or on the ecosystem, 
and even in other ecosystems. What can they expect? Is there any type of documentation to get them started? Do you expect that there is going to be any type of influx of projects saying we have some material need where we feel we want to participate with bridging our token? What's your assessment there? So I would see that I have already seen some interest from people in the Zelega community wanting to have more exposure outside of Zelega. So that that is something that is easily possible. So uh, once you have a CRC token on Zelega, you could bridge them across over to Ethereum and then maybe enjoy uh, some of the benefits that Ethereum provides, for example, a larger community. Mm -hmm. Any of that uh, in reverse? Anybody? And are there any? Yeah, inverse, you know, which is if you, if, and that's kind of why, for example, we are trying to bring USDT. Because I mean, many people, if people don't notice that, but if you look at, um, you know, we can like and hate and debate all that are about Tron. But if you look at right. the USDT volume on Tron, it actually spikes up every time Ethereum gas fees goes up, which means that there's a demand for USDT on it on Tron. Right. E and Ether just goes, you know, too high on gas, just route through the Tron network and then problem and, solved. Uh, so uh, there is, there's obviously that possibility as well. So for example, if you want to, let's say, buy Zils, um or trade something, you could bring the USDT back to Zilliqa and buy, let's say, Ether, for example, at a cheaper mm -hmm. price if you wanted to have a cheaper gas fee. It could also potentially be a possible way for you to um, not... So let's say, for example, you are in a certain country and you don't have a centralized exchange that offers you Zils. So what you could do is you could take your USDT, you know, um, bridge that, that over to Zilliqa and then swap them for Zils on, on Zils swap. So it also presents a way for people who don't have access to to a local exchange that lists Zils, you have Zils swap as a, as a potential opportunity for you to get Zils. In a more general sense, right, we're moving from the bridge specifically, in a more general sense, for those same founders and developers who are looking at Zilliqa as a leader in the space, you know, there's there have been questions raised about the market cap of Zilliqa. Well, if we look at the top 100, if we look at the top 250, we can see a number of chains that are not quite active that are not, you know, into the same level of development. So for those who really look at Zilliqa as a leader in the space, who have a functioning blockchain with smart contracts, with with everything else, you know, that that um, I would add on here to, to paint that picture that I think we all know, what advice could you give those founders, those developers based on this experience, since it's all relatively new to all of us? Look, I think we, a lot of people, of course, uh, are attracted towards crowd in, 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 for all sorts of reasons. But if you think about it, right, uh, imagine building something on a chain that needs it, right? You, where you see that there's a demand. So for example, today, you'll go to the committee and you will see people asking for a lending product. And if, if, if a developer, let's say, owns a, like on Ethereum or Binance Smart Chain, if he sees that, okay, if there's a community that wants it, why would I not do that? So as long as there's an active user base, and as long as we as Zilliqa community can show to developers that there's an active community wanting to use and waiting for you for, for you to build a product like, like, I don't know, lending, for example, uh, you would want to build this. It's very similar to, let's say, I would say, uh, you know, let's say you are building a Facebook-like application. You would say, okay, I'm only going to serve Apple customers and not going to serve Android users. If you see that there are Android users, you would want to build it. So that's, that's, that's our goal, which is to show to the world and to people outside of Zelika that there's a user base that's active and wants to use this. And the numbers are actually do speak a little bit. You know, if you look at many of the darlings of Ethereum today, right? If you look at the number of people actually using some of these products, they are, they are probably 10 to 20, you know, people yeah. actually using those, which means that if you can show people that there's, there's a user base active, wants to use these products, you would want to build that. Excellent. Well, thank you for that. The last thing I, I really have um, that I want to ask now that we have the inspiration for developers, like if, if somebody's, you know, if, if, if it's out there to be done and can be done and the numbers support it, go ahead and do it. Um, hopefully they, they get tons of Zilliqa support, but in terms of expectations back to the bridge, right? Coming back to the bridge now, those expectations, what are you thinking is going to happen you know, in the immediate aftermath of the bridge launch, what are some of the things that you're looking forward to? You know, I'm not looking for price predictions and stuff like that. You know, when, when I'm involved, I, I, right. I care about that in my personal life, not, not in my, not in my YouTube stuff, but uh, it, look, if you want to go there, feel free, but what are you expecting as a result of the bridge launch? Look, the first thing is obviously kind of our goal, which is to drive TBL. 
So uh, the more TVL comes to the platform, that's why we'll have some incentives planned uh, for three key assets, which is uh, USDT, ETH, and BTC. So the idea is to bring those assets, and once those assets come in, we will all naturally have more transactions coming in from the, us the users. Hopefully, once you have the pillar protocol, which, uh, as you know, it's a MakerDAO-like system that allows uh, people to mint stable coins, you could take some of these assets and then put that into, into pillar as collateral as well. In theory, and again, we'll have to see how, how uh, Switchio and the Zilsop team uh, goes with it. But uh, as you know, Switchio has built DMX, which is uh, basically a derivatives exchange, mm -hmm. which means that once, and by the way, when, when we are connecting with this, this bridge, Zilliqa basically connects to Switchio, Switchio then connects with Polynet, and then Polynet basically connects to Ethereum. So by doing going through Switchio, you basically can tap into Switchio as well. So in, in a sense, you basically can have a um, built-in uh, ready to use sort of uh, derivatives exchange if you wanted to. So that's that's something that uh, now if uh, Zilliqa wanted to, or if you wanted to, because there was a little bit of a smirk when you said that, Amron. I'm truly I'm truly asking. I don't I don't, for anyone watching. I don't know. I don't have information, but I see that smirk. So uh, <laughs> no, it's not that we don't want it, uh, but yeah, there's. Um, I don't think there's going to be too much of development work required, but of course, uh, you know, switch your guys will have to will have to do a little bit of leg leg work there. Okay, so maybe I should I should you know call Ivan and say, hey, what are you thinking about this? Amrit was smirking when he said this. I, I want to know what that means. So, so should, this means should that I do that legwork? Right, and this means that you don't even have to build something because you have something already built. Right. Uh, again, it's not technically on Zilliqa per se, but you can use the assets, for example, XAGD, Zilla, whatever assets you have on Zilliqa. If you could bridge them over to uh, to Switcher, you could actually use some of their you know products that they already have built. Well, Amrit, thank you so much for the sake of time in experimenting with this. I do want to go ahead and stop. We have so much we want to talk about from pillar to the derivatives to everything else that we mentioned. But again, for the purposes of this experiment, let's go ahead and call it for today. Thank you so much for agreeing to do this. We'll see where it goes from here. Hopefully you've had some fun. Final words? Uh, my pleasure. Uh, thank you very much for inviting me over. For those, uh, you know, Developers who are looking to bridge assets either way, uh, just wait for the tutorials and you know, documentations. They will be there. And uh, once they are there, you'll be able to use some of them. And it's, it's going to be very simple. So even for those who would like to, for example, duck or carb or uh, you know, port, if you'd like to move some of your assets to Ethereum, that should be possible and it should not be too complicated. So as simple as deploying a contract, getting that contract registered in the UI on the switcher site, and you're basically done. And so all that will be ready for them at the time of launch? So um, for the time being, you know, there's going to be an announcement hopefully soon uh, on this, but uh, the idea would be to test the bridge a little bit. So we will launch the bridge. Mm -hmm. We'll let the bridge settle down a little bit just to see if, you know, given all the history around bridges recently and especially Polynet, we would like to be a little bit more careful, especially with assets which have low liquidity, right? You know, BDC, ETH, and UCG are very different. I, I appreciate you being careful with our money. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so for ZRC2 tokens, which don't have enough liquidity, it's, it's, it's you know, I would suggest, uh, and probably this is going to be some recommendation from Situa guys as well, which is wait for a while. Again, the while doesn't mean a month, it could be much shorter, but just see how things go. And then, you know, you would be able to, you know, put your own tokens on the bridge as well. Excellent. Thank you so much, Amrit. My pleasure. Thank you.